Our guest preacher for today hails from the West African nation of Ghana. First Baptist has a long and fruitful history with various parts of Ghana, having first sent mission teams there beginning in 1999. In 1984, our guest preacher, Bishop Ransford Obeng, founded and became the senior pastor of the Calvary Charismatic Center, a non-denominational church located in Kumasi, Ghana, with over 3,500 members. Its mission spread the good news of the Gospels throughout Ghana and to the ends of the earth. God has used Bishop Obeng in planting over 40 mission churches throughout Ghana and sending missionaries to the UK, US, Jamaica, Ivory Coast, Senegal, and other countries around the world. In addition, he has trained and mentored many young ministers into key leadership positions and is committed to equipping and producing believers who are empowered to fulfill their God-ordained purposes and ministry. In Ghana, Bishop Obeng is often affectionately referred to as the Bishop. Please welcome our guest preacher, Bishop Ransford Obing. I bring you greetings from Ghana, West Africa. It is a great joy to be with you this time again and to share the word of God with you. Today, I want us to Steady a scripture that is familiar to all of us. It's a story in the Old Testament. And everybody that has been to Sunday school, whilst you were young, you learn about that story. It's the story of David and Goliath. We all are familiar with that story. And that is what God has laid upon my heart to share with you this morning. My first thing I want to say is this. Who is Goliath? We have the physical Goliath and then the spiritual Goliath. Goliath was a person that once upon a time, he lived on this earth here. The Bible tells us that his height was between six and nine feet tall. And the Bible painting for us how strong and giant this man is. The Bible says that the armor that he carries weighs 125 pounds. So if you can wear something 125 pounds and still be able to move your leg, that means that that person is a strong person. And Goliath was a Philistine. Every time that he appeared, people were afraid of him. And in those days, when they were going to battle, what they decided to do is that every nation would choose a person. And that person will represent that nation. And then you can fight your opponent. And if you are able to defeat that opponent, it means the nation have won. It's like America going for soccer game. If they won, even though you were not there, you, you identify yourself as an American and said, American have won. All of us have won the game, even though you did not go to the football field. The same way they did. That if somebody represents us and is able to win, whatever he does, he has done it for us. It's exactly what also Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. You and I were not there. But whatever Jesus accomplished on the cross of Calvary, he accomplished it for us. So Goliath was somebody that was tormenting the Israelites. The Bible says that any time he appears, they, will, they are full of fear and they'll be running away. This was the physical Goliath. Goliath also can represent in the spirit realm anything that stands your way of achieving what God wants you to achieve is a Goliath. Anything that makes you fear all the time when it comes up may be a Goliath in your life. Anything that 
you, you have dreams and you want to fulfill that dream. But any time you make an attempt to fulfill that dream, that thing shows up and it's not able to help you to go forward and achieve what God wants you to achieve. We have personal Goliath. What may be your Goliath may be different from my Goliath. But not only do we have personal Goliath, we also have family Goliath. There are families that nobody has been able to reach a certain level. There are certain families that nobody has even had any successful marriage. It's a personal Goliath. There are certain families nobody has ever gone a degree. It's a family Goliath. And somebody in that family must rise up and say, I am going to defeat that Goliath in that family. We also have national Goliath. As a country, there, may, there will be a Goliath that all of us are fighting. But we also have a global Goliath. And today, what all of us are fighting is this pandemic. It's a global Goliath that we must know how we will be able to defeat this global Goliath that is worrying everybody. It is one of the things we also have to understand is that sometimes you can even have a medical Goliath. Whatever Goliath you have in your life, I believe God through David was able to kill Goliath and he has laid down the procedure for us. How we can always defeat any Goliath that will come into our life. In fact, in Jesus made a statement that every one of us, it doesn't matter your status in society. Every one of us will face Goliath, not only one time in your life. It can be two or three or four times in your life. In John chapter 16, verse 33, from the Good News translation, Jesus said, I have told you this so that you will have peace for being united to me. The world will make you suffer, but be brave. I have defeated the world. From the Message Bible, it says, I've told you all this so that trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured, deeply at peace. In this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties. In this present world, you will continue to experience difficulties. But take heart. I have conquered the world. Jesus is telling us that he has conquered the world. We will face difficulties. We will face different Goliath, but he has already conquered it. It means that we are walking in the victory that Jesus won on the cross of Calvary. But also I want you to understand that behind every Goliath, this is where I want you to get it clear. Behind every Goliath, it's a demonic spirit. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, from the Good New, New Living Translation, for we are not fighting against human beings, but against the wicked spiritual forces in the heavenly world. The rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers in this dark age. You and I will bear me out that up till this time, our scientists, our doctors have still not got solution to this pandemic. It keeps changing its form all the time. There's a spirit that is behind it. You know, there are certain things that happen in life. It's not everything that is natural. There are things that are natural. I'm not saying everything is spiritual. There are things that are natural. There are things that are orchestrated by demonic forces. Let me give you a typical example. When Jesus told his disciples that let us cross to the other side of the sea, 
The Bible says that whilst they were on the sea, there was a storm. Jesus was asleep. The disciples were experienced fishermen. They faced this storm several times. So they tried, but they realized that they couldn't. And when Jesus came to the scene, the Bible says he rebuked the wind. It means there was a spirit behind that storm. The devil knew because if you read the, other, the following chapter, after they crossed to the other side of the sea, they were met with a man that was demon-possessed, that Jesus healed that man and he was sound. The enemy knew that if they got to the other side, somebody that he has taken captive was going to be set free. So everything that he would do to prevent them not getting to the other side, he was going to do it. So sometimes there are certain things that happens in our life. It is not natural. It is spiritual. Therefore, if it's spiritual and you fight it naturally, you will not be able to defeat it. So understand behind every Goliath. It's a Goliath because it's a giant. It is something, it's not something you can easily solve it. You've tried the Israelites, any time Goliath appeared, they were all filled with fear. They were all draw back. They were, they, they were looking for somebody that can come and defeat. But they were looking at Goliath from the physical aspect, not the spiritual aspect. Thank God. When David came to the scene, we will see how God, through David, overcame came that Goliath and if we learn that principle no matter whatever will come on our way whatever Goliath that will lift up his head we will be able to defeat once we learn the principle the Bible says that everything that happened in the Old Testament happened for our example so that we will learn from it and so as we read the Old Testament, we should read with the understanding that God wants to teach us some things from it. So we are, I'm reading from 1 Samuel chapter 17. And for time's sake, I will read verse 26 and 36. And there are certain scriptures I want you to note carefully. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 26 and 36 from the New King James Version. Verse 26. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills these Philistines and take away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? If it's your own Bible, you can underline the word uncircumcised Philistine. That he should defy the armies of the living God. Verse 36 of 1 Samuel chapter 17. Your servant has killed both the lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of of the living God. I've already said that behind every Goliath is a demonic spirit. The Israelites were looking at Goliath from the physical viewpoint. They were not looking at it from the spiritual viewpoint. But what David said here gives us a clue into the mind of David and what David was looking at. The Bible tells us that all of them saw a giant. But when David looked at that giant, he said something. Because in verse 26 and 36 of 1 Samuel chapter 17, a word is used twice. He used the word uncircumcised Philistines. Uncircumcised Philistines. What is he talking about? What David realizes is that this giant that everybody is looking at, yes, indeed, physically, he's supposed to be feared. But he remembered another thing, that this man 
is a Philistine and he is not circumcised. What is the circumcision that he's talking about? Those of us who know our Bible, there was a man called Abraham. He met God and he had a relationship with God. And God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen to me carefully. And that covenant God had with Abraham, he, God told Abraham, your enemies will be my enemies. Your friend will be my friend. Whoever curses you, I'll, I'll, I'll curse that person. Whoever blesses you, I'll bless that person. David was a descendant of Abraham. And so he looked at the Philistine and he said, this man, even though he's strong physically, he's a giant, but he has no covenant relationship with the one who created the heaven and the earth. And that makes the difference. So he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Because he was not in a covenant relationship, that put him at disadvantage. I want you to listen to me carefully. This is where David saw. He saw that this man, even though he has got everything to fight the battle, he, God is not with him. Because he is not a covenant child of God. He is not into a covenant relationship. And remember, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 19, for we fix our attention not on things that are seen, but on things that are unseen. What can be seen lasts only for a time, but what cannot be seen lasts forever. What David was looking at was not the physical. He was looking at the spiritual aspect of everything. He took this battle to another level. He took it from the physical realm to the spiritual realm. And when he took it to the spiritual realm, in the spiritual realm, if God is not with you, then you cannot face the enemy. But the Bible says that if God be for us, who can be against us? And that is what he took. He said, this man is not a covenant child of God. He doesn't have all those covenant relationships. And remember, when you enter into a covenant with somebody, the person's blessings, assets become your assets. His liability becomes yours. Thank God we are in a covenant relationship with somebody who doesn't have liability. All that he has is asset. We have liabilities. And we are in a covenant relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And because we are in a covenant relationship with Jesus, it gives us the advantage. That is why in this world, we need to be very, very careful. You know, I tell people, do everything that you can do physically, but don't leave God. Because if God is not on your side, you may be intelligent, you may be as rich as anything, but if God is not on your side, you are at disadvantage because it is not everything that is physical. And this is what David recognized. You see, when we talk about covenant, what is covenant? You see, covenant is entering into a relationship, an agreement with somebody. And one of the things that happen is that the moment you enter into a covenant relationship with that person, that person, at any time you call upon him, he's there to come and help you. If America enter into a covenant relationship with another nation, if any nation attack America, that nation that they have entered into covenant with will come and support them. And that is exactly what happened. You know, one of the things is that when you are in a covenant relationship, it gives you access to a lot of things. And that covenant makes God deals with you. So in this world, when God looks down from heaven, he sees two people. 
those who are in a covenant relationship with him and those who are not in a covenant relationship with him. And those of us in a covenant relationship with him, we have a special place. We have a special privilege. It's like when you are going to board a plane. You know, those people who have first class, one of the things that happen is that they don't struggle. They go at their peace because they, they call them and they have the privilege of getting into the plane first and they get a better seat because of the, 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 the kind of ticket they have. The same way, if you are in a covenant relationship with God, God looks at you as a child and therefore whenever you call upon him, he will come and the covenant is very, very important. How do we enter into covenant relationship with Jesus? In, do, in the olden days, if you belong to the family of Abraham, you have to be circumcised. In the New Testament, you enter into covenant relationship with God by receiving Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Because whenever you are entering into a covenant, it's exchange of words. If you want to marry somebody, you only just take him to the courtroom and then you exchange words. And you said, I take you to be my wife. And he said, I take you to be my husband. And that covenant is sealed. It's the same way. The Bible says that if you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. The moment you open your mouth and say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Today, come into my life. You enter into a relationship, a covenant relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the moment you do that, you give God the access to work in your life and to help you. And that is the reason why the moment you give your life to Christ, he gives you the Holy Spirit because God is a spirit. And therefore, he can help you. The Holy Spirit will help you to communicate with God so that he, he also will communicate back to your spirit. It's very, very important. Covenant is very important. David was able to defeat Goliath because of his covenant relationship with God. He did not do that on his physical strength, but on the, on the fact that he knew that I am in a covenant relationship with God. Those of us who have received Jesus, we are in covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is for us. And being in a covenant, I try to liken it to like having an umbrella. You know, when it is raining and you have an umbrella and you know how to use it, because sometimes people may have the umbrella, but they don't know how to even to operate it. And so uh, it, 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 the sun is shining, it's raining, and then they are being beaten. But if you have an umbrella like this, and then it is raining, and you know how to operate it, and then you put up the umbrella like this. You see, the umbrella is not going to stop the rain. But so long as you are under this umbrella, you are covered. The rain cannot beat you. That is exactly what it is when we are in covenant relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, it will not stop the rain, but the rain can come as much as the rain won. But once I am under the umbrella, I am under his covering. The Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. And I will say of my Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. If you have given your life to Christ, understand that you are under the canopy of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is over your life. And therefore, it doesn't matter what happens. You are under covering. You are under his covering. And that is why you have to make sure that you stay in that covenant. And listen to me, uh, in, John, in 1 Samuel again, verse 17, 45 to 47, I want you to hear again the words of David. 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 47. 
Then David said to the Philistines, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the bears of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all these assemblies shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord and he will give you into our hands. What I want you to notice here is this, is, is, is a key. You know, David, even though he had stones, never made mention of the stones. Yeah. He had stones. He had the catapult, but he never made mention. He said, you come to me with sword and spear. But I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. In other words, his confidence was not in the stone. His confidence was in God. Yes, you see, what I'm trying to tell us is that, you see, to be able to defeat Goliath, you need to fight it both physical and spiritual. You see, I tell people, you know, this pandemic, yes, get, they say put on the marks, put on the marks. Yes. They say, get a shot, get a shot. But don't let your confidence be in the max or in the shot. Let your confidence be in God. David said, look, you come to me with sword and spear. But I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, even though he had the stone. You know, when Saul tried to give him his armor, he said, I've not tried this. Because my, my confidence is not in it. My confidence is in God. And because his confidence was in God, he was able to defeat Goliath. I'm saying that defeating any Goliath in your life, you need to fight two ways. Fight spiritually and fight physically. What, whatever you need to do physically, do it. But after you have done it, make sure that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Even though they are not carnal, the Bible says they are mighty through God. It is mighty true God to the pulling hole of every stronghold. So one of the things you and I need to understand is that every time you are facing Goliath, there are physical things you need to do. Do it. But don't lift out the spiritual. Because once you don't lift out the spiritual, like David, and you say, yes, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And then he took the stone. It was God who was working behind. And that is one of the things I've come to assure every one of us. That let us fight this battle. Any Goliath that you have in your life. Yes, it may be sickness. If you need to go to hospital, go to the hospital. Let them give you what is behind it. When you come, yes, you pray and say, Lord, I want to thank you for what the doctor said, but you are the doctor of doctors. You are the great physician. You are able to do beyond what human being can do because the Bible says he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we ask or what we think. And, and then you begin to pray and say, whatever is behind this sickness, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Sometimes a door that ought to open and is closed, you come against it in the name of Jesus. As you are fighting it physically, you are fighting it spiritually. And when you do this, there will be no Goliath that will be able to stand in your way. Look at it. The Israelites... Saul and his people saw Goliath and he was so huge and were, they were afraid. David saw Goliath and he said, that, look, he's so huge that even if I close my eyes, I won't miss the target. You know, it is too perspective. Yes, but once you approach it from the spiritual perspective, yes, you will be able to overcome whatever Goliath that comes on your way. But in conclusion, listen to me. If you are a covenant child, make sure that you do the covenant practices. There are a lot of things I talk about covenant practices. And one of the, the because of time, I'll not be able to talk about all of them, but I'll mention it to you. The first covenant practice is what we call covenant meal, which is the Lord's Supper. 
Because when Jesus was dying, on, uh, before he died, he introduced that covenant meal. And he said, this blood is the, is, is the blood that I'm sharing and ushering you into that new covenant. Remember, David was under the old covenant. We are in the new covenant. The new covenant is better than the old covenant. So if he was able to defeat Goliath under the old covenant, in the new covenant, we are more than conquerors. We can do more than that. So I call it covenant meal. That's why a lot of people, sometimes you are sick, you take the communion and then believe God and God heals you because it's a covenant meal. I have what I call covenant time. If you are in a covenant relationship with somebody, you always do your quiet time. You want to talk to that person. It's a covenant time. You don't joke with it. You don't, you don't sacrifice for anything because that person that I'm in covenant relationship with is very, very important to me. How can you be in a covenant relationship with your wife and you've not talked to your wife for one week? Yeah. Yeah. Then everything is breaking down. So covenant time is very important. You keep your covenant time. I have what I call covenant money. Covenant money is your titan offering. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, the Bible tells us that, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Covenant money. You don't touch it. Anytime you receive your income and everything, you know that this is covenant money. I don't touch it. There's also what I call covenant intercession. The Lord told Abraham, can I go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah without talking to my friend? And he talked to him and then Abraham started interceding. That is covenant intercession. And anybody that is a covenant child, you do that. Then we have covenant lifestyle. Covenant lifestyle is obedience. Obedience is a covenant lifestyle. So when you do these five covenant practices, covenant meal, covenant quiet time, covenant money, covenant intercession, covenant lifestyle, if you, you, you practice covenant living, let me tell you, you are under covering. The enemy cannot do you any harm. The Bible, Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gate of hell will never prevail against it. You see, when we talk about this, you all know that when Jesus said, I will build my church, listen to me. He was not talking about building. He was talking about people. Yeah. So what he's saying is that after I have built my people, after he has built you, then you'll be able to stand and nothing will be able to come against you. Yes, yes. If you don't allow yourself to be built, then everything can come against you and they will fulfill. But if you allow Jesus to build you up, that's why I gave you those covenant practices. As you begin to do it, he's building you up. And the Bible says, having done all, again I say, stand. He will build you and become so strong that nothing will be able to defeat you. I pray that the Lord will bless every one of us and the Lord will keep us. And will strengthen us. I don't know what Goliath that you are facing. But listen. God is with you. If you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are a covenant child. Don't be afraid of that Goliath. Face him squarely. And, and, and come against him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said in my name. You shall tread upon scorpion and serpent. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I'm here to encourage you. Don't be afraid. Don't let fear grip you. Uh, people are talking this and this and this. Don't be afraid. You are a child of God. Before you get out every morning, you only pray and say, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. I'm going into the world full of diseases and sickness, but I'm going under your protection. I am going under your covering, and I pray that you will take me and bring me back because the Bible says he will give his angels charge over us, lest we dash our feet against the stone. He's the God that go before. Lord, go before me. He will go before you and bring you back safely. Make sure every morning before you get up, you talk to your covenant partner because because what you cannot handle, your covenant partner can handle. We are not like those who have no hope. We are the children of God. God is with us. He's with us. So don't be afraid. Don't panic. You will live to accomplish everything that God wants you to accomplish. 
I pray God's blessing upon your life. And wherever you are, I pray, those of you who are hearing me, if you are sick, I want you to touch that part that you are sick. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every sickness and every disease. I come against every Goliath in anybody's life, any demonic force that is behind that Goliath. I come against you in the name of Jesus and I pray for a release of your spirit and your anointing. In Jesus' name, be made whole, body, soul, and spirit. If you have never given your life to Christ, please give your life to Christ so that you will come under God's covering. I pray God's richest blessing upon every one of you, your life. Stay blessed all the time. Amen.